William is a longtime professional photographer. So I decided to ask him, what is the one most important thing for a great photo? Recently, I was in Fukuoka, Japan, and I got the chance to meet up with my good old friend, William, <laughs> who runs a photo studio named Accent Studio. Me and William, we go way back, and I think he's partially responsible for getting me interested in cameras to begin with. Because I don't live in Japan anymore, this was the first time for me to see his studio. Wow, I'm gonna film how messy you are. Are you okay with that? You know, you're making me imagine this is like Gerald and Dunn's studio. Yeah, it's, I guess it's kind of like the inspiration. Like. If I'm standing here, this is this is like his frame. Yeah. Cool, man. This studio is hella dope. All right, do, a, do a spin. Do a barrel. Wow, that's amazing. Like, this is a Z9. So, how much money am I holding right now? Ten thousand. About eight k. So. Right. How would you light somebody in your studio? So, uh, let's say you only have one light. Uh, just one light is enough for most scenarios, honestly. Like the, the typical like basic thing we want to start with is a Rembrandt, which is having the light 45 degrees from your subject, uh, maybe slightly higher than them. So let's say like this. So mm. as you see, like I have half my face in the light, and I also have like a s small light here, and maybe a little bit of reflection in my eyes. Mm. So that's what you call a Rembrandt because Rembrandt used to paint in this fashion. Like very contrasty look. And if you have too much shadow on the side, you can add, add a reflector. Oh. Just need a reflector. Uh, you put it like as close as possible to your subject, or you just move it more or less towards you. It just mm. brings up the shadows. Right, right. Because like now, one side of your face is very dark. Like if your light doesn't have too much output, mm -hmm. it's not strong enough. You just ask your subject to go closer Close. to the light, oh. and then suddenly your output is multiplied by four. Right. <laughs> right. So, that's the that's the actual yeah. scientific mathematical. Yeah, if you're like right. a meter away and you go fifty centimeter away, you didn't multiply by two, you multiply by four. Damn. Okay. So that's how you do it. And the closer you are, the wider. Yeah, uh, you would want that. Is so the softer the light is gonna be on your right. face, man. And if you're fancy and you have a second light, what you do is you add it uh, behind the subject mm. again, forty-five degrees. Uh, from the back and then you have like a small sliver of light that kind of like edges like your head and your shoulders mm. and your hair and makes it pop a little more yeah uh, from the background I'm a, I'm a huge fan of that one yeah i usually do that that other light yeah. over there with just like a cheap little pocket light honestly yeah, you can use this like a small light yeah. even a point light you don't need something Oops. big like this just need like a point light even like a torch I'm, like I, a, i've i've used my phone before yeah, phone. and that phone works work a, just pockets, makes that pop. Pocket light could work. Yeah. We don't. We don't care about quality over at the John Bear channel. <laughs> <laughs> We're all a bunch That's of amateurs. Now, if you've gotten value from the video so far, it would mean so much to me if you hit that subscribe button. Most people don't watch the video this far, so if you watch this far, that means that there is something here for you. Now, a few weeks later, I'm back in Dubai and I built out a little mini home studio in one of my tiny rooms in my apartment. I followed William's advice and put one key light with another backlight that sits across from the key light. Here in this photo, you can see the outline that the other light provides. Here, I drew a dumb little diagram for you to kind of get a better idea. Now, I had a big problem. My studio is way too small. In a recent video where I talk about how to make perfect selfies, I explained that the key is to keep the camera far away from your face. This makes all your facial features more attractive. So when I designed the studio, I actually had the doorway in mind so that I could take photos all the way out here. So we have one key light set up here. I actually moved it back to the top here because <laughs> like I needed to make a little more room because it was way too close this room is quite small and actually I'm standing all the way out here so we're just giving her a little break now because it, it gets so warm with the small room and the very very bright lights so uh, and you know posing is hard it's hard to uh... <laughs> yeah it's Thai hen for everybody but uh, the end result will be worth it so just standing between these two lights you, you start to really feel the heat. So for example, when I'm doing YouTube videos here, um, just talking for like 20 minutes, by the time I'm finished, I feel the sweat going down my back. So <laughs> just to give you an idea of how, how hot these lights can be. Now the camera that I'm using is the uh, Lumix S5 that I picked up in Japan. The lens is the Sigma 24 to 70 f 2.8. But sort of the point that I want to demonstrate in this video is that it's not the camera that matters, it's the lights. Masumi made this. Wow. Break it. Let me show you. Whoa. Whoa, the fluffiest bread in the world. <laughs> Thank you, Masumi. Doki Doki Panya. This is uh, Masumi's bread brand. 
Okay, next we're gonna try to recreate this shot here, sort of like an above shot. So what I've done is I put a chair here, plan is to stand there, I move the light forward and very high up. Let's see how it works out. I think the end result is phenomenal, and I believe anybody could get these good results with a fairly small budget and some DIY energy. In the description below, I have links to some lights that you can buy for less than $80. I also have links to the lights that I'm using that are a lot more robust, but also more professional level, so they are a bit more expensive. But trust me when I tell you that the cheap lights will do the trick. And like William explained, if the light is not powerful enough, just keep it closer to your subject's face. Lighting is everything, and I hope your takeaway from this video is that you don't need the best camera to take very beautiful photos. You just need some good lights. Once you've got good lights, you could snap the photos even with your phone, and you will have outstanding results. So guys, gotta check out William. Most of everything that I've learned about photography I've learned from him. All right, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Should I do the outro? Like, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. Uh, once again, my name is John Beer. If you want to see more of my content, hit that subscribe button, and click I will see you. Yes, click on the thumbnails, <laughs> and I will see you in the next video. You. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> hey, Nathan. Hey.